So go ahead, Edgar. Thank you, um, Uriel. Uh, I just want to ask you if you see my screen and if you see, yeah. more, uh, importantly, give me a second, if you see my laser pointer, do you see? Yes. Okay, there is something asking me for stop sharing, but okay, let me go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, it is a pleasure uh, to be here today and to present um, the most recent work of my group done in collaboration with all these people here. Many of them are in this workshop, especially when well, this uh, is in collaboration with the group of Ali, uh, in which we study the blocking of uh, spike protein of coronavirus, which is this structure, with lecithin molecules, which are these ones. This is a molecular dynamics study, which we combine with uh, some uh, fancy data analysis and um, uh, statistical uh, physics techniques. So before starting, I just uh, introduce you to my current group. Uh, we work, uh, we study non-equilibrium fluctuations in physics and biology within the emerging field of stochastic thermodynamics. So for more information, you can go to my website and check uh, our main interests. So here in this conference, we have Roman, who is, uh, will give a talk about first passage types. We have also Gennaro, who will talk about stochastic resetting. Ashwin will discuss active matter. Also Rita is my student working on the same topic. And Fahad, who is also present in the conference, is working on biophysics of receptors. We are theorists, we do uh, data analysis, we do numerical simulations, but we also collaborate with many experimental labs on different topics, from bullfrogs, optical twists, quantum dots, so we are very broad, and also very recently with molecular dynamics simulation groups, as in the project that I will discuss uh, now. So uh, you've seen a lot of this about coronavirus, its structure. Uh, so this is uh, our target study. So coronavirus has this uh, structure with a lipid membrane and a protein shell that I can uh, highlight here, which is made of spike proteins protecting its RNA, its genetic information inside the, its, the, this uh, membrane. Uh, the spike proteins have this structure of a trimer and here I'm just highlighting the monomer, so one of these three units of the, of the protein, which has two uh, parts called S1 and S2 by the biologist. Uh, in particular, we are here focused on S1, which is the most exposed part of the, of the protein, which is also the one that interacts with the human cells, uh, which is what I'm going to explain later. So in particular, we will discuss in the monomer uh, what happens, or what are the, the dynamics and the fluctuations of the um, loop dominant receptor binding domain, which is called RBD, uh, which is the one that ultimately uh, interacts with the human cell, as I'm showing in this uh, figure here. This is a sketch, but you can see that the coronavirus targets the H2 human receptor, and this is like the entry gate for the virus to uh, being able to uh, infect a human cell. So in the last month, there has been a lot of uh, research on trying to block the entry of the coronavirus in the cell. And there are two very promising um, lines. One is to use uh, ACE2 receptor so soluble in water. So put a lot of ACE2 in a solution. And this, uh, let's say, cheats the, 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 the virus who thinks that it has infected the cell, but it, it, it doesn't because it's bound to ACE2 that is out of the cell. With this, there is a beautiful paper in cell with experiments which have shown that using soluble H2, you can reduce the viral load in a, in a human cell. Moreover, there is another research line which is using antibodies, as I show here in the illustration, which uh, have been also very effective to, to stop the, or to reduce the viral load in human cells. And this recent work in nature is showing that the crystal structure of the receptor binding domain bound to the uh, antibody shows prominent uh, hydrogen bonds. So this motivates us to study this junction very much because uh, we see that water may have an important role in the uh, infection of the uh, cells by the coronavirus. Okay. In particular, we have um, a different approach, which is uh, illustrated here with a movie, in which we are inspired by the action of soap on virus. This is a typical soap molecule. Well, soap is an amphiphilic molecule, which has a polar head and a non-polar lipid tail. And uh, because of this um, dual action, it is able to both disrupt the membrane, lipid membrane of the virus, take out, for example, oil uh, residues in the, in the, in the skin. 
by doing this type of structures, which are called micelles. So the, 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 the soap molecules are interacting with their non-polar tails with the, with the oily parts of these molecules and taking them out of the skin. But also, they are very effective in interacting with the coronavirus because of what I'm going to show uh, in this movie. Uh, what they do mainly is, okay, this is the, the lipid bilayer, it's an illustration, this is not molecular dynamics. And what the amphiphilic molecules do is like they internalize in the membrane. And then you think to the action of water penetrating in the membrane, they can form this type of structures called micelles and both take out part of the membrane, but also trap the protein of the, of the virus. In particular, we are more interested in the second part, which has been taking little attention until now, which is the interaction between the viral protein and surfactant molecules. So uh, this is our goal. So we want to understand the molecular interactions of the RBM in coronavirus with non-toxic surfactants, because be careful, you have to think that soap is toxic, so you, we cannot put soap molecules in our cells. We want to look for biodegradable, natural amphiphilic molecules that may be putative blockers of the coronavirus, the single molecule. In particular, uh, this is our uh, system. So we are looking at the RBD, is this protein structure shown here, which binds to the ACE2 uh, via some hotspot residues. So there are some amino acids that have been shown to be to form bonds, like uh, hydrogen bonds with the ACE2 human receptor. And uh, for convenience, we have introduced this nomenclature of different regions in this RBD protein, which I will discuss later. The most important part here is this red part, the RBM, which is the zone that is most exposed to the uh, human receptor ACE2. So this is the molecule that we want to target, and this is like the weapon we use to target. It is called lecithin. Uh, in chemical uh, nomenclature, is, its name is POPC, and it's a biodegradable amphiphilic phospholipid. It's present in cells, in the membranes of cells, in soybean, so you can get it in soya, in eggs, you can also go to the supermarket and buy it, so I bought it myself. It's not that I'm eating this, but it means that I could, it's something you can take and don't die when you, when you eat it, so our body is able to, to metabolize it. And it's also, more importantly, present in the lung alveolar surfactant. So in the lung, we have surfactant um, uh, liquid, and this has, in one of its components is this, like it in the opposite. The structure is as follows, so it has a non-polar uh, hydrocarbon chain and then a polar head, as I'm showing here. So now, what I'm going to show you is uh, molecular dynamic simulations that we, we did well, this was done mainly by Nawaska Rani during the lockdown. So uh, this is uh, the RBD in water. I'm not showing the water molecules in the presence of lecithin molecules. And you will see how lecithin attacks the RBD and binds in some specific hotspots in this RBM zone and in this zone as well. So here are some details. We are using the MBT ensemble uh, at room temperature. This is a box and it has predicted boundary conditions and we can repeat these simulations for a larger number of lecithin molecules. And we were very excited to see this. We did this uh, simulation for different concentrations, so different values of number of lecithin molecules and for different initial conditions. So we built a lot of data. And uh, what we did next was we tried to analyze the data from, sim from these uh, simulations. We have here an, an orthodox approach, yet holistic, because we look at three phases of the problem. First, what happens with the protein when lecithin comes. Second, where do lecithin molecules bind in the, in the RBD? Where do they bind? And third, what is the role of water in all this story? I'm going to talk mainly about these two parts. And only at the end, I will explain a little bit about this. For this, we use a combination of HPC molecular dynamics, we do very exhaustive data analysis in my group and insights from chemistry, because chemistry plays also a very important role in this uh, process. All right. So first, I will go to the second question, which is where and how long do lecithin molecules bind to the RBD? So what you see here is a snapshot for the case of 15 lecithin molecules. And you see the lecithins are attached in this region and in this region mainly. What I plot here is a contact map, so it's like an interaction matrix 
this uh, what is showing is the lecithin molecules, which are shown in the, uh, these are these lines, interact with different residues of the protein. What we see is that there are dark spots here, meaning the distance is small. So there are dark spots in the distance between the molecule and this region of the of the protein. So this is what I highlight here. So the RBM are these amino acids shown here from 439 to 507 are having these marked spots here, which means that there are many lecithin molecules marked. So you see there is long interaction times and small distance. So the lecithin molecules are close to these parts of, of, the, of the protein. And this uh, happens in two parts, the RBM and SOM2. The RBM, we know it's important because it's exposed to water. And SOM2, it is the part that this is not exposed to water, but it's inside. So it could be accessible to molecules when there is an opening and closing of the trimer, which we know it it's, uh, can happen in, uh, in, in, in real experiments and in regard. So this would be less accessible in reality. This, but this is very, very relevant for, for the problem of infection. Edgar? Yes. One question. Would, why do you say that this happens only in these uh, particular sections of the protein? Because I, I see a lot of black spots outside of those regions. Yes, yes, yes. There, there are also black spots here. So mainly with this, I want to, to say that you see patterns, no? So you see one here, one here, one yeah. here. It's the same structure. And also here, you see patterns. In the other ones, it's not so clear. Uh, Oh, okay, I would say the other zones have also contacts because the less the molecules are long, so you can you can bind to some two from here and then stretch a little bit and and get close to to the to another zone. So I I'm giving a let's say a course green picture that sure. you can bind mostly to these ones, but the others you also bind. Sure, sure. Just a bit weaker. Okay. Sorry, so, may I ask a question? Yes. And it seems that the, the uh, concentration of the lecithin is very high in your simulation. This is really huge, actually. Yeah. And the question is that in the high concentration that you have, what about the other micromolecules? I think that lecithin could uh, decorate any micromolecule that you have, any protein and everything that you have in the, this space. That's right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. This is a proof of concept simulations where we are looking at. Uh, let's say the simplest scenario where there's only lecithin, but of course, if there would be other proteins, uh, we cannot um, discuss that lecithin will bind also to other proteins. So then, then one question could be that how, if you compare the affinity of the lecithin to the different proteins that you are in the, there, you can find in their environment, is lecithin prefer to join to connect the uh, RBD spike protein or something else, for example? Yeah, this is a great question. And uh, I must say, I don't know the, the answer by now. Uh, but we, I mean, which, which protein do you think would be interested to, to, to compare with? Because uh, I think any, any protein in this way, because the, the proteins are, have very similar uh, uh, parts, okay. as similar yeah. residue. And if the lecithin is, very attractive to the some kind of residue in this protein RBD, why it doesn't attract to other helix, helices or beta sheets in the other proteins, the similar proteins or something like that. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, it is, it is. The question is that, uh, is the lecithin affinity to the RBD is higher than other protein or not? We have, is there we have some kind of the comp yeah. comparison is ne needed here or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I agree. This is a very important uh, feature to look at. Uh, which mm -hmm. we yeah. haven't done yet, um, uh, but uh, we must do. This is uh, okay. important because if, if in the end if you say, okay, I would like that a molecule of less thing reaches the virus, in the end you mm -hmm. will, for example, like a nanoparticle with H2 that then joins with the, with, with, with the virus and then brings the density. That's right. In that case, you could do. This is something we are kind of uh, discussing, but of course, it's far from what we can do in simulations by now. But uh, yeah, but one could use lecithin as a carrier, which others have used in, in recently, uh, therapy for, for COVID, for example. But, um, but yeah, by now, yeah, we are in the ideal world, but there's only water, 
the spike and the city. Okay. okay, that's good. Great, great suggestion. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. See. I sorry. I had another question, yeah. and um, in the in the picture you are showing at the at the left side at the top, um, yeah. a problem I have is that. Um, the population of the of the lecithins uh, around ACE2 seems to be seems for me that there are a lot of them because in the cell ACE2 is a transmembrane is a transmembrane domain and if you like rotate your conformation now for 180 degrees then the ACE2 will sit within the membrane and if there is no membrane in your simulations then this interaction matrices you are presenting uh, yes. may, at least may not be very accurate for the for the ACE part. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. And by now, this is what we could achieve. So these are a lot of atoms, and it's a very high. Yeah, I know, I know. But uh, it is. I will actually. I will say this in the open questions. So our next goal is to try to repeat this in contact with the ACE two and see yeah. if lecithin can, can enter. In contact with the membrane, right? Yes, yes, yes. OK, the membrane. membrane is one thing. <laughs> with the membrane, with H2 is another thing. With the membrane and H2, it's an even more complicated problem. So you're mm -hmm. adding atoms, and it's even more complicated. But uh, that would be our kind of our final goal. And this would be, of course, beautiful to do it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, thanks. All right, so may I continue? <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, what I show here is the distance between the center of mass of the lecithin and the protein. But now what I will show you is this uh, um, disentangling of this interaction between polar and non-polar center of mass. So I'll show you the same contact maps, but um, broken into two parts: one for the polar, the other for non-polar. What we see is that the polar contacts are much weaker than the non-polar contacts of lecithin. So we are seeing that mostly is this part which is binding closely to the protein, both in SON2 and RBM. The, sig the signature is very clear, so we can conclude that the contacts between lecithin and RBM are really dominated by hydrophobic interactions. At distances more than 100 meter, and the time scales are order of 100 nanoseconds, with 300 nanoseconds binding and so on. That's why these simulations have to be done for a long time because lecithin can be there for hundreds of nanoseconds. So you need very powerful uh, computing resources or, or, uh, yeah, or wait a lot of time, like we did. So you see that hydrophobic contacts are dominating this uh, interaction. But then the question that comes to our minds is, OK, you have an hydrophobic contact. What does it mean hydrophobic? What is happening with the water near this contact? Uh, is it really dehydrating the, the lecithin, the protein? And this is what we tried to answer by doing um, an analysis on the water density near the RBM H2 hotspots. So we have the RBM, and we know there are 16 hotspots. In each of the hotspots, we take the alpha carbon in the amino acid, and we draw a sphere of radius R, and we count the water density with, um, relative to the bulk density of water. So when you increase and increase the radius of these spheres, you see more and more water. At the end, for very large radius, you will see the bulk density. But very importantly, we compare here for two amino acids, the real distribution without and with lecithin. So what we see is with lecithin, this density is take, moving out. So for any value of R, we are having less water molecules when we add the lecithin. And what is very striking for us is that we look at the 16 hotspots, and in the 16, we have a displacement of the Gibbs dividing interface, positive displacement. So we have the wetting near all the 16 amino acids in the hotspot. And this we can show with a, a snapshot. So this is without lecithin, water is moving very happily near the RBM. So this is the phenyl running, this one, this residue, water is moving happily. And now when we put lecithin, lecithin comes here with its non-polar groups, and it takes water out of it. But there's really a, a depletion of water near uh, the, the hotspot. So this is a very, very clear effect of depletion of water near polar amino acids. And we also see that this is a concentration dependent. So the more or less... Sorry, excuse me, Edgar. 
Yes. Uh, is, isn't that just excluded volume effect that uh, res, uh, resetting uh, occupy its space that water cannot reach to the residue? Uh, or is that uh, effect of the, because, because the res, uh, resetting is the oily uh, yeah. molecule and l uh, less hydrogen bond can make with the water and the, uh, yes. after the, which one is more important here? The excluded volume effect or having an oily molecule in the neighborhood? We, we think it's because of it's an oily molecule, but uh, yet we don't have a, a very clear, I mean, we, we haven't quantified this um, effect. We don't know yet. We don't know yet if it's an effect of both, which is what I think, uh, but we have to quantify or it's only because of school volume or because of anomaly. Surely what we have tried is with other molecules and it wasn't that clear this effect, it wasn't that strong the bound and so on. So we know the oily part of the lecithin is playing an important role because we tried with other amphiphilic molecules and it wasn't that clear this effect. Uh, but we have to investigate further this. So of course, okay. Go somewhere, so then you have mm. some yeah. kind of a hydrophobic effect around the residue that you have a corona of the hydrophobic particles around the, your particle, and then no water can come inside. Yes, yes, but uh, it's not so clear because some residues you don't see it. Uh, so, I mean, I'm showing here the extreme case, which seems okay, yes. it has to go somewhere. In this one, you see water all around there, so it's. It's not that clear. Funny that I mean, it's clear, but but yeah, it's a great question. We have to we have to investigate this. Uh, thank thank you for the suggestion. Edgar, uh, we need to wrap up. Yes, yeah. I, I just this. These are the conclusions. Just uh, okay. This thing has a pretty role of blocking the spike protein, and it's done thanks to hydrophobic interactions, which is accompanied by the wetting, as we just discussed. There are open problems that have been discussed also doing the dynamics, kinetics of these simulations, or simulate the virus, so the lecithin near lipid envelopes. This is something we would like to get some feedback from you. Uh, and that's it. I want to acknowledge the work of many people. Uh, you see, we were meeting, we did all this work during the quarantine. So we were meeting on the streets, sitting on the ground in the Molo, in Trieste. Uh, this is ICDP, is a uh, Trieste collaboration. It's something very uncommon with also, uh, industry, Uriol Well, who is uh, our chemist. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just finished with uh, this movie. Thank you for your attention. And please check what happens here because you will see a denaturation of the protein at some point. Thank you for your attention. I, you see. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, Edgar. It was a really nice talk. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for more questions, but we have now a break of five minutes and if you want you can stick around